Good morning. I'd like to morning, call morning. the morning. Um, Thursday, May 14th, uh, Highway and Buildings Committee meeting to order. Could we get a roll call, please? Mr. Washington? Present. Mr. Kinsinger? Present. Mr. Hess? Present. Mr. Tholen? Ms. Polk? Present. Mr. Snipes? Present. Ms. Peters? Mr. Zenz? Ms. Haas? Present. Mr. Carrico? In there. Mr. Carrico? Nope. Mr. Eckhoff? Present. Mr. Featherling? Present. Mr. Smith? Present. Mr. Dunnell? Present. Mr. Long? Present. Mr. Kirkstra? Present. Mr. Wheeler? Present. Mr. Seeroy? Present. Uh, we have a quorum. Uh, with your permission, Mr. Washington, would it be okay if I led the meeting from here? Yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, do we have no request for public comment? Uh, the first item, approval of minutes, March 12th, 2020. Is there a uh, motion? So moved. Uh, Did you catch those? Sorry, it's hard. I think it was Aaron Dono with the with the motion and the second. Featherling. I said. We'll go John Featherling this time. Okay. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, same Aye. sign. Those opposed. All right. Motion carries. Uh, highways, Mr. Rogers. Good morning. Uh, we have a few payments this morning. Uh, the first one is for the <clears throat> county's 2020 general maintenance. This is payable to Compass Minerals for uh, rock salt. And that amount is $8,261.02. Next is for our county general maintenance for 2020. This is payable to Vulcan Materials. This is for road mix picked up at the quarry. And that amount is $660.86. Next is for our Kankakee County general maintenance for 2020 supplement one. This is payable to Vulcan Aluminum. This is for aluminum sign blanks and that amount is $2,173.90. Next is Pembroke Road District for their 2020 general maintenance. This is payable to the Pembroke Township Road District Treasurer. This is for equipment rental and that amount is $19,910.97. And last is for Salina Road District for their 2020 general maintenance. This is payable to Vulcan uh, Materials. And that is for aggregate picked up at the quarry with their trucks. And that amount is $19,965.09. All righty. Is there a motion to approve the pay estimates? So moved. Mr. Washington with the motion. Uh, the second would be Mr. Kinzinger. Um, any questions about any of those? Roll call vote, please. Mr. Washington? Aye. Mr. Kinzinger? Aye. Mr. Hess? Aye. Ms. Polk? Aye. Mr. Snipes? Aye. Ms. Haas? Aye. Mr. Carrico? Aye. Mr. Eckhoff? Aye. Mr. Featherling? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Mr. Dunno? Aye. Mr. Long? Aye. Mr. Kirkstra? Aye. Mr. Wheeler? Aye. Motion carries. Alrighty, moving on to resolutions. This is the resolution authorizing the board chairman to sign the road use agreement between the Peterman Two Solar Project in the county. So, Mark, the floor is yours on this. Okay. <clears throat> um, in order for uh, the Solar Farm Peterman Solar Two LLC to obtain a building permit, they have to have a road use agreement with uh, the Highway Authority. Uh, there is a map on the last page. This one is uh, on the south side of Roma Park on Vandercar Road, just uh, east of the railroad tracks. Um, I put together a road use agreement uh, and it was reviewed by uh, Peterman Solar 2 and also with the state's attorney. Uh, everything is pretty straightforward. Uh, we're just requiring a bond. They have to get a, <clears throat> excuse me, an entrance permit and it, it uh, spells out insurance, spells out uh, the requirements of the county and the requirements of Peterman 2. There might be a couple of tweaks here, but I will get those approved by the state's attorney before I would have the uh, uh, Chairman Wheeler sign the agreement. Alrighty. Mr. Uh, Chairman? Uh, yes, sir. 
I'll make the motion, but I have one question. Sure, let me get a second. Let me get a second first. Is there a second to the motion to approve? Second. Polk. Mr. Uh, or excuse me, Ms. Polk. Um, and, and please, yeah. your question, Mr. Hess. Yes, Mark, is this agreement coincide a little bit like we did with the wind farm? Uh, no, it, it's not quite as extensive as the wind farm. Um, I'm not anticipating the amount of loads and damage that a wind farm would do. This is more like a uh, uh, a commercial building per se. I mean, there's very little concrete. They're 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 only bringing in a, a small um, crane to and steel materials, which will all be legal loads. And uh, so we're not anticipating any major damage. They they are going to construct an entrance, which we have approved the design. But other than that, uh, I'm not expecting anything near what we did for a wind farm. Okay, thank you. And this is uh, Old Vandekar Road. I see it. Because yep. it's hard with all the names we saw last year, the 60 yep. or so applications, it's hard to remember yep. which is which. Right. Lord. Um, so, yeah, this is Vandekar. Is there any questions or concerns out of uh, Mr. Seroy in that area? Do you have any no, questions? No, yeah, I'm glad they're not going to be overweight and... They are going to put their own culvert in, Mark, or do you have to provide the culvert? No. Uh, as part of the special use permit and the state law says that if somebody wants a new entrance, they have to pay for the uh, installation to our standards. Okay. All righty. And if, uh, you know, the if the situation happens like it was uh, asserted that it happened out with uh, uh, the Met Tower out in uh, the Bonfield area, if there's, you know, dirt clods that get on the road, is that a county or a township issue that that is addressed in the road use agreement uh if they they cause any uh impairments or any uh safety issues they have to uh repair those or clean those up within a certain amount of time okay i have mr chairman uh mr featherling <clears throat> how much time mark mr rogers i mean how, how long do they have between the damage and the repair and the clean well, we'll we'll let them know depending on the type of emergency it is, and then uh, there is a specification in here that if it's not done in a in an orderly manner and and fashionable time frame, that that uh, we will do it and charge them. Okay, so like, how long are you going to give them? Two hours or one hour or eight hours? Or well, eight? I think in here it, it says twenty four hours to forty eight hours, 24. but uh, yeah, if it's an Close. if it's an emergency safety issue, I'm sure they're going to address it. Okay. Now, is there a possibility that they would just say, you know, our, our our guys aren't there, can you guys take care of it, and then we charge them, or they have to get out there? They have to do it. Okay. All right. Mr. Chairman? Uh, yes. Have the road commissioners been put into the loop yet through uh, planning and zoning? Uh, I don't think the system is up and running yet. Uh, it's because of the, the COVID situation. We were, and I'd have to check with Dell to see if that has happened. Uh, but I don't see it as an issue that they, uh, you know, they'll, they'll be made aware of that. You talk to all the other highway. The, uh, this particular um, uh, solar farm is located on a county highway and all ways into this site are on county highways or state highways. There should be, there are no township roads for them to go over. It's actually going to be right across the street from where Rick Fowler, the road commissioner from Aroma Park lives. Ah. Uh -huh. So he'll find out before any of us when it starts. Okay. Yeah. There won't be any more in the summer. Any other questions about the agreement? Uh, do you expect this to be pretty standard amongst the, the other, well, unless it's a township road? And... What, what my intent with this was to make this kind of a, 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 uh, a, uh, what am I trying to say? A, a boilerplate agreement that all I have to do is change the name. And if, uh, and I've, there's two other ones that are being proposed by this same uh, solar company. Uh, one is in Limestone Township on 1000 South. There are no county highways with that one, but I offered uh, the highway commissioner my agreement to pass on for them to use also. And there's also one on in Mantino Township, just north of 6,000 North on Cardinal Drive. Yes. Okay. Any other questions on that? We have, uh, I guess, a motion and a second if we're ready to, to vote. 
Um, yeah, we're not spending anything. Nope. So that would be a voice vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And those opposed, same sign. Well, motion carries. All right. Anything else of import? No. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. By the way, have you checked with, um, I've driven by CSL quite a bit. Have you heard of a date of opening for their, their new entrance? No, I have not. Uh, I've been in contact with uh, M. Gingers, Jeru, and um, they're supposed to be checking on that and getting back to me. Because it looks close. Oh, yeah. It looks very close. Yeah. Like imminent. So, yeah. okay. Yeah. Roger, one question. Uh, I noticed that you were saying as an engineer and it says district engineer. Is that the state of somebody? The district engineer? Yeah, the state. Yes. Is, is, the district engineer is is the the uh, district engineer in Ottawa, which is over our district. We're in District Three. Okay, that's up under state program, the State Department of Transportation, or something. Yeah, it's it's IDOT. Yes. Oh, okay. Thanks. All righty. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, next up is uh, facility dude Wes Andrews. <laughs> Our maintenance director. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. So we'll start out with the facility dude report. I included the month months of March and April in this. Uh, month of March, we had 179 work orders in the system, which is pretty high. And then uh, in April, we outdone ourselves and we had 206 work orders um, in the month of April. So, um, you know, we continue to be very busy and, you know, I, I have to compliment my staff, you know, throughout this whole process. You know, there's there's been absolutely no complaining. They've, you know, they've really done an outstanding job in, you know, everything that I've asked, everything that, you know, that the sheriff has asked and the other, you know, folks in the other buildings, uh, they, they've just done an incredible job. And, you know, on top of all the cleaning that we've had to do, you know, we, we still have to repair and maintain the buildings. And and uh, you know everything continues to be in good working conditions. So um, just want to give them a shout out and, and recognize you know my staff for, for their efforts during this uh, time. The uh, financial report that you have, uh, we're working through a new process on uh, the, the way that we do our financial reports uh, for maintenance. Um, you know, Joanne has been helping me out with these, and I've been working with Steve um, in the finance department to customize a new report. And um, I spoke with Steve yesterday, and they're just very, very busy um, with with what's going on right now. I think they're even short staffed. So, what I provided you here with today is a uh, year-to-date numbers uh, comparison fiscal year 19 versus fiscal year 20 um, and you can see at the bottom that uh, you know we are um, at 345 646 16 year-to-date fiscal 20 compared to 369 and change in uh, fiscal year 19 um, so, so you can go through that. I mean, if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them, but I just don't have the individual building detail um, that we typically have for this uh, for this meeting. So if there's any questions on this, you know, I'm, I'm happy to answer them. Mr. Chairman? Uh, yes, Mr. Kinzinger? Yeah, Thank you. Um, anything of significance that occurred that we should be aware of for this past month as it relates to any of the buildings or any problems that may be coming forward? Uh, when I get to my building report, we're going to go over, uh, obviously everybody's aware of, you know, the repairs that have been going on at the courthouse. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's going to be some significant expenses there that I'm going to discuss um, in my building report. We've also got photos of, uh, re ready for the committee as well, so we can discuss those. But as far as, you know, the other buildings go, uh, Ron, to answer your question, no. I mean, really nothing of significance. It's your ordinary, you know, plumbing issues at the jails, um, you know, nothing of significance at the other buildings. Thank you. A uh, question on that, uh, you know, like um, miscellaneous supplies or, you know, other other things that we see an increase in. Would that 
Is that stuff that's COVID related or is it just, just general? It's just, and I changed the way, I mean, last year as I was coding some of these items, you know, I've changed the way that I've coded them to because you've got basically two line items, 52100, which is building maintenance improvement supplies, and then you've got miscellaneous supplies. So last year, you can look at 52100, we're way behind where we were um, this time last year. And then in the other one, miscellaneous supplies were, were over. So that's just a difference in how I've been adjusting some of what I've been coding the expenses to. Okay. Any other questions on the financial report? Yeah, uh, just one. The, uh... I know we have some grants and things that have come in and I, uh, at, looking at your report, uh, certainly there's going to be, we're going, the uh, expenditures are going to outweigh the revenues that you have. Um, do, is there any projected uh, figure as to where these revenues will uh, peak at and so that we'll have an idea so we can, uh, I guess, with the finance committee and, and I guess, the county board in general can look at to know kind of where those numbers are headed. Are you speaking in, in reference to the repairs at the courthouse? Is that what you're talking about? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, yeah, I've, I have a summary of, you know, the expenses that, that we have and the projected expenses, and then obviously the grant monies that were owed. So yes, I, I have all that in a document where I have, I've been keeping track of what we've spent minus the grant. And yeah, I have all that information. Okay. Thank you. Uh, along those lines, I was going to wait till later, but it's a good time to mention it. Uh, you'll see that there was some things that popped out of the woodwork you know as i mentioned i think last meeting when you you go to do something in an old building you find something else needs to be done those things were not originally covered under the grant uh that we were getting uh this committee decided to go ahead and do the circle driveway if you remember because we were tearing everything else up and it made sense to do it at that point we knew that wouldn't be under the grant but we didn't know that the courthouse steps were being supported by a, a hundred year old railroad mm -hmm. rail that was all rusted out and heaving and pushing other things out of the way. Um, and we didn't realize that there was a, a uh, 100 plus year old uh, uh, original kind of uh, brittle brick, uh, what do you wanna call it? On the circle drive, the original circle drive we found as we were tearing up the asphalt, the bricks are completely brittle and really not of value, but those half, that's extra money to get out of there. So at the I got a hold of Representative Parkhurst. Uh, the, the board may know that, you know, obviously she got us this grant for the courthouse. She also got, I believe, uh, 2022 grant money for $400,000 for the courthouse. We got them to agree to bump up a portion of that to cover these cost overruns. So um, we're trying to cover off the, the you know, the, the this old house type stuff where you punch a hole in the wall and then it, there's another 10 grand looking at you that you got to spend to fix it. Um, so uh, we don't have a complete picture quite yet because that hasn't been awarded, but it'll be minimalized what, what we're going to be hit with as far as these overruns as much as possible. So uh, we just don't have that complete picture yet because that hasn't, the paperwork hasn't come through from the state. By the way, the um, front steps look beautiful. When I passed by the other day and it's a 100% improvement of what they look like in the past. Yeah. Yeah, Wes's crew has done a great job. The, the, the people that we had in here were historical buildings professionals. Um, you know, I was talking to Wes about some not too powerful power washing because you don't want to take all the, the history out of it, but you do want to be able to clean up some of the rust from the rails. We have new rails. You're going to see all that, but uh, his crew and, and the contractors has work, been working with have done a, a great job. And, and uh, yesterday you heard from Judge Kramer, if you're on criminal justice, just about how how uh, I would say non-intrusive the work has been as, yeah. as much as possible when you got half the building ripped up, obviously. Right. So, right. Um, Thanks, Andy. So moving into a uh, building report, we'll start here at 189. Um, I've ordered uh, si signage for the building r related to social distancing. Uh, we've got all that in. We've installed it throughout the building. We ordered plastic shields. We put those together and installed them. Um, we, we started prepping the wall for the mural that's going to be painted here soon. 
Uh, we went around and we installed hand sanitizer locations on every floor in every department. Um, and those aren't just your run of the mill hand sanitizers. We actually have a hand sanitizing uh, station, a concentrated station in the basement where we can take out the cartridge, bring it down there, fill it up and put it back in. Um, so that way we always have a supply and you know we shouldn't really have any issues uh, running out. Obviously we gotta make sure we continue to order the concentrate, but I'll keep a good eye on that. Um, I think everybody's been appreciative that uh, of that for the most part that we have those throughout the building now. Um, those are at the courthouse as well. Other than that, just repairing air handlers, getting ready for the summer months uh, when they've been shut down all winter. Obviously, when you when you turn on some of the old units, they don't work as well as what you'd like. Uh, so we've been working through a lot of those issues here at uh, at 189. On top of all the cleaning and you know all the enhanced cleaning procedures and everything that we've been doing um, at the courthouse, we'll go ahead and jump to. I prepared some photos that I wanna share with you now um, of all the, the repairs that have been going on at the courthouse. We'll wait till we get these brought up and I'll kind of talk you through them. So what you have here, this is a picture of courtroom 204. Um, obviously the, the carpet's been removed. They began some of the framing um, for the ramp in courtroom 204. This is the courtroom that uh, you know we, we had to uh, make the repairs for the uh, ADA accessibility. Uh, we can go ahead and go to the next photo. This is Judge Winsman's old courtroom. It's Judge Albrecht's now. I'm not sure who's yeah. whose it was previous. Andy, do you know? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure who previous. I'm not sure. So I, I don't think it's Winsman unless he was there years ago. This is uh, this this has been Judge Albrecht's for a while. Yeah, Winsman. Yeah. So the, the, this is the uh, the the ramp framed out. Jason, you can go to the next one. Uh, that's what we're looking at now, and um, so you've got. You know, obviously the carpet's put back in, the, uh, all the pews are put back in for the seating. Um, we installed some electrical outlets below, the, below those attorney's desks. Um, there was an issue in there with, uh, when the attorneys would come in to try a case, they would, they would have uh, cords all over the floor for various media uh, type stuff. So we installed some outlets under the desks. You can go to the next one, please. Just another photo of the uh, completed project. You can go to the next one. There's the ramp completed. Next, please. So that was a before photo, obviously, but you kind of get a sense for, and you just keep going through them, Jason. All right, so now we'll stop there. Are there any questions on that courtroom? It's- Boy, It looks good. Thank you. We, we did the lamination as well on, on some of the uh, the bench seating, because some of that was uh, pulling off. So we, we repaired some of that. Um, and I, I'm trying to think of there's oh what about the uh, jury assembly? There yeah, are jury. photos of the jury oh, assembly okay. in here somewhere. When we okay. when we get to that, we we can talk <laughs> through it. Um, so th this is the drive. I, I did take a couple photos of you know just over the course of the last couple weeks where we're at on the drive. You can see on the right side of the screen the new sidewalk and curb that's put in. On the left side, we have just a curb, uh, which is exactly how it was before. Next, please. Just another uh, photo d during the construction project. To the right is the um, the handicap ramp going into the basement. Uh, you've got that concrete wall that was falling apart there that has been uh, repaired. And then you have all the iron on top of that that was all uh, cleaned, polished, and painted uh, black. So everything is uniform and looks good there now. Next, please. So that is uh, some of the grade changing at the courthouse. Those are the um, air intakes in the basement. Um, and that particular part of the building, the slope was actually running towards the building, um, just, just a little as I understand it from our topography study. So those are actually getting built up and then we're gonna have uh, the, the grade change will grade away from the building. So next please. That's what it looks like as of yesterday. So we've got obviously the sidewalk and curb complete. We got the gravel in and we are very close to being ready for asphalt. Next, please. I have a question. Is, sure. um, did we change the, the slope to make it more compliant with ADA as well? Yeah, they, they took a look at all the cross slopes everywhere um, at the handicapped parking areas. They, they took a look at everything. So that, that's why we did have to make some changes. So that is those grates that you saw in the previous photo on the right there. Next, please. 
next all right now we are under the front steps so this is this is what we were dealing with um when we took the limestone or the granite steps off of the front of the courthouse uh wow. next please well and that's what they look I, I had these in an order but when we switched computers they got kind of jumbled up so that's obviously the finished product we'll go to the next one that's uh, that's the finished product with um the new handrails installed you can see that uh, we've got handrails uh short handrails when uh, up by the doors and then everything looks nice it's uniform um i, I really like the way that turned out another photo so what this photo is when they took the limestone steps out you can see the uh, we had to pour some footings so it looks like a hammer or something laying on the ground there uh, on the lower right. That's a concrete footing that was poured. And then instead of going back, I think one of the next photos you'll see it. Um, so that there, there's a concrete footing there that was poured. So this is what we were dealing with when we took off the steps. The steps were sitting on this brick. And then the brick you can see was sitting on that rail iron. And you know I'm, I'm not a... Uh, rail iron expert but that looks like it's uh well it, it, it looks like it was in some disrepair so we 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 talked about it and we decided that we were going to take it out and make the repair um it, as it should be and it, yeah and we talked with ron uh ron came out thank you and uh took the took a look at our mess and uh, had some good advice and uh you know he was part of the reason why the uh, project turned out as good as it did so can you go to the next one please hey wes yes sir hey why did they use the rail iron was it like trusses they, they were stacking the material on top of that that's what it used for support okay so that's that's what we were that, that's a pretty good photo there that's indicative of what it looked like under the entire span of the steps so next please there's a close-up of it so that's when we took the steps off that's exactly what it looked like right there so they were sitting on all that brick and obviously the the brick was in bad shape as well so next photo so this is jury assembly uh can you go to the next one is the next yeah there you go so that's what we did is for ada purposes um this this whole this whole jury assembly area was sunken down about a foot you had to step down from the from the jury boxes on both sides of the courtroom. You had to step down into this jury assembly area. So what we did is we raised the floor about 12 inches and we made it all the same height. And then it ramps out. So you can go to the go to the uh, previous picture. Go the other way, right there. So that's what it looks like now. So you walk all right. in, you're all at the same height, and then you ramp out of the uh, jury assembly room. Any questions on that? Yeah. Looks good. Okay. Yep next one that is the I, I wish i had a photo of this uh before but that is the after photo of the concrete wall outside of jury assembly in the basement and i looked and i couldn't find it and i was upset with myself but the previous photo would have shown the the building falling apart i mean the over the years the salt and you know whatnot over the years it, it was it was badly corroded and the concrete was failing and uh so that really looks nice and that's like i said that's on the west side of the building outside jury assembly i think that might be it is that it okay uh, so any questions on the work that's been done there Wes, was that the finished picture that was just up there Yes. We're going to be going back around a little bit, uh, getting some crack sealing done on some other steps, uh, working on some other handrails that need to be, uh, you know, polished or, you know, grinded down and, and repainted. So we're, we're going to try to do the, you know, some finishing, finishing touch stuff on our own. But the major work you've seen is, is where it's at. And then the, uh, the ramp itself. Yeah, the, the, the ramp, I didn't have, um, I forgot to include that. The ramp is done. The, the ramp is done. The grades have been changed. It's all, the next step is getting the attorney general to come out and look at it. Um, and the, uh, yeah, the handrails were installed Monday. I believe it was Monday of this week, the handrails were installed. So that is 100% completed. I didn't include a photo of it because it, it basically looks the same way it did before. You can't really, the only difference is a new handrail. 
obviously the grades have changed, but you wouldn't have known that from a photo. And, and the turning radius too, where, yeah, the you turning have to, radius. The, where you get to that first landing, you have to have a certain number of inches um, in, in uh, radius to be able to turn around. And so we, we got permission from the historical society. We had to take literally an inch off of, of the, the, the corner of the building it didn't it didn't degrade anything but if not for that we would have had probably to go down the hill with the ramp and that would have been five six seven hundred thousand dollars to to reconfigure the whole thing and so the attorney general and the historical people work with us on that and i think it's a, a good solution mm -hmm. yeah yeah um so th those are the photos of what's going on there needless to say the last couple months have been extremely busy with everything going on there plus you know the 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 COVID issues that we've had so um you know we've got uh, enhanced COVID cleaning measures in place right now at the courthouse uh once they open which we, i've heard various dates um we're gonna have to look at you know enhanced cleaning procedures and you know i'm gonna have to probably reallocate some of my staff um you know we're also looking at the possibility of adding some extra janitorial staff to assist with you know you listen to like criminal justice yesterday and you hear about the backlog of you know court cases i mean that place is going to be extremely busy and we need to make sure that we're providing as, as safe an environment as possible so i've been talking with the chairman a little bit about uh you know the you know adding a couple staff members um you know on a temporary basis to uh assist with cleaning there andy do you have anything else you want to add on that no just to, that we've we're, we've had initial discussions with with labor on that and they don't, they're not opposed to the thought process it's not a permanent thing um but it is something that we're going to have to be doing for a while because again if you're you're having a jury spread out they can't be next to each other if they're doing a trial they have to be spread out in the room and then somebody else is coming in the afternoon you've got to clean that um and we just don't have enough staff to do that right now on not a regular even basis it's so we're going to have to dedicate certain people in certain areas based on needs and, and it's going to take another couple of folks to do that i don't think the board has would probably have an issue with that we'll talk about it when the time comes but uh i don't necessarily look at it as permanent staffing increases um as and i think uh that's been received well we're having further discussions yeah um we've also worked with uh we've also been installing plastic shields and we've actually fabricated some of them um we've installed we made them and installed them uh for sandy um and uh going on to the annex same thing there for tom um he's got some uh doors that roll up in his office area we bought uh, some plastic we framed it out and we uh, installed plastic barriers for him as well um, the old jail lots of plumbing issues I mean that's I sound like a broken record but you know toilets sinks, showers pipes leaking I mean that's it, so we fix something and another one breaks and you know it's just it's it's just a constant issue over there um, that we work through and we're used to it um, out at Jerome Combs the cameras are nearing completion uh, very close I would I think they're about 85 90 percent um, we've had numerous pipe leaks in the main hallway out there um, one again there we, we we fix one leak another one you know uh, occurs we fix that a uh, new steamer in the uh, kitchen. We split that with uh, corrections. Um, it was a steamer for the um, the uh, food service. It was original to the building. It was useful life was over. And I uh, was happy that uh, Chad and corrections split that cost with us. Um, I did hire one new employee out there as we are short one employee right now as well. Um, so we had a, a new employee start this past Monday. Um, to assist with the cleaning out at uh, the public safety building. And I also plan on utilizing her at the courthouse as well. I'm looking at probably three days a week at public safety and probably two days a week at the courthouse just to help there as well. So that's all I have. I ran through that pretty quick. Um, if there's any questions, I'm happy to take them. Just, uh, any questions, one Mr. Snipes? Um, I know we did the renovation in 20, uh, 204. That was Judge Wisdom's old courtroom. Uh, when I saw the green chairs up in there, that that was a great indicator. Uh, now that we've done all those uh, renovations, and uh, have we considered, I don't know if there's a budget for it or maybe it's further down the road, 
kind of replacing those green cheers aesthetically to complement the changes that's in 204? I it, I haven't looked into it yet. Do I agree that we should? Yeah, probably. Um, you know, but it's not something. A lot of what I do is, you know, what what is completely necessary. And right now, the green chairs, they work. Um, you know, if that's something that we want to look into, I'm I'm happy to do that. But no, I, I haven't done it as of yet. And yes, I agree, they are hideous. They were great in the '70s. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> Just know that, yeah, we, we talked about it, but we're still in kind of emergency mode because we don't know what tomorrow brings as, as far as finances go. So, yeah, that'd be that'd be it. It'd be nice to have another ADA courtroom, to be honest. Um, so, you know, it's just a matter of getting to that to that yeah. point. So. Or actually just another courtroom in general, because I think we have 10 judges and nine courtrooms. So uh, there's always going to be one unhappy judge, I think, uh, <laughs> under that auspice. So, any other questions for Wes? All right, thank you. Any, any uh, old business or new business? Well, then uh, I guess I need a motion to adjourn. So be it. That would be I Mr. Hess and a second for Mr. Kirkstra. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Have a good day.